Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Once I understood this, this altered the course of my life. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. And here's the big one. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. You don't need less problems. You simply need more skills. Don't wish for less challenge. Wish for more wisdom. Accept the challenge because you can't grow without a challenge. You can't get rich without a challenge. You can't fly without gravity. You have to understand the challenge. But that's the key is to now develop wisdom to overcome the challenge. Don't wish for less challenge but more wisdom. And then here's one more philosophy to help change my life forever. You can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Humans can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Philosophies that change my life. Human beings are the only life on earth that has this incredible capacity to change the course of your life. No other life form can do that. Every other life form except humans seems to operate simply by instinct and the genetic code. In the winter, the goose flies south. How often? Answer, every winter. If you said to the goose, hey, it'd be better this year to go west, he ignores that advice. And the reason is because he cannot make choices and listen to advice of something that might be better. He has to obey instinct and the genetic code. But now jot this down, not human beings. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, how did you do that? Here's number one. I discovered I was not a goose. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down? No. No, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. No other life form can do this. See, if you were a tree, you'd be stuck. As a tree, if you used up all the nourishment that was around you and you couldn't change location, see, you would die. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Now, here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? This is for mature people now. If you keep up your present disciplines and keep up the present pace that you're on, where will you be in five years? Boy, it's easy to say, hey, I haven't really thought about that. So now make this note. In five years, here's the probability. You will either arrive at a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. Well-designed or undesigned. And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do, simply because you didn't design a better destination. Key phrase, up front, the decisions are easy. Now, sometimes after we've lived a few years now to repair our mistakes and get back on track, seems like a tough job. But here's the key, and it's so exciting to talk to the teenagers. Make the note, if you start early, the fortune belongs to you. If you start early, all fortunes that are available to humans, if you start early, the promise looms large and the odds are heavy in your favor. Now, yes, it's possible to do some radical things starting late and still arrive with some good treasures and some good things. But when you haven't got that much time left, now sometimes the decision has to be so drastic people are not willing to make it and they're too tired and too weary and too ill. And say, look, I don't have much time left. It's not going to happen for me anyway. It's easy to take that attitude. But everyone here, we've got the time over the next 10 years. We've got the time the next 20 years. We've got the time the next 30 years. 
to make some repair now in our errors of the past and set up some new disciplines. And I'm telling you, that's going to change everything. So five years from now, I wish for you to arrive at a well-designed place, a place of productivity, a place that'll make you feel good about yourself, a place that'll give you honor and respect, a place that'll give you influence to touch other people five years from now that you couldn't do today. Where will you be in five years? Key phrase, we go the direction we face. We go the direction we face. If you start designing something at the end of this direction, sure enough, you will start going the direction you face. Next phrase, direction determines destination. Destination is not determined by hope. It's not determined by wish. Destination is determined by direction. You cannot change destination overnight. You cannot change destination overnight. Which means you can't arrive at a five years from now place tomorrow. But here's what you can change today and overnight. You can change direction. And it is so fascinating what a little small change of direction will do. A few decisions in discipline, a few decisions in learning, a few decisions in change of behavior, change of habit, a few decisions in setting goals that you've sort of let drift before. Like I did at age 25, didn't have a list. I immediately started to change that. And I immediately started to change my direction. In less than seven years, I was a millionaire. And that was just my economics. But I am so thankful for the circumstances and whatever else arranged it for me. Some things are arranged that we don't even know how they've occurred for you to be here. Do you imagine the chain of circumstances that caused you to be able to sit in this auditorium today? It's amazing. This had to happen and this had to happen and this door had to close and this door had to open. And all of those things for me to be here, for you to be here. I just didn't drop out of the sky, right? And you arrived here from all kinds of directions. Here we are. And so we just say, wow, part of that's a mystery and we let it be a mystery. We don't even try to figure it out. We just say, wow, it's incredible. But now that we're here, how could we collectively and individually affect each other's lives? It's by doing just what we've done. Study, learn, teach, shake hands, trade stories and do all the stuff so that we can help other people as well as ourselves to make that small journey to a new direction. So jot that down. It's only a small journey to a new direction. Guess how quickly you can change your health by starting to eat an apple a day. Mama said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Let's say you've been ill long enough and you've had health problems long enough and you say, that's it. That's over. I'm going to now start a program. You don't have to really revolutionize your whole health life. Just start with an apple a day. You say, well, is it that simple to change your health life? And the answer is yes. The key is just to start. You know, you pick up a book on good health and you get halfway through the book and it says, now, dear reader, set this book aside, fall down on the floor and see how many push-ups you can do. And then it goes on to say, and if you have not done that, why not give this book away? It looks like you're not going to do it. Come on. You don't have to radically do something. You can gain momentum and make changes as you go. Just start. Here's what happens when you start a new direction. Self-esteem starts to accelerate. It doesn't take much for you to feel good about yourself. Just commit it to a new direction and you feel good. And an apple a day committed to finally having a health program that'll make you the healthiest you've ever been in the next 20 years. All you got to do is munch on that first apple and nobody even has to be around you and you don't have to announce it to the world. But you munch on that first apple and say, this is the beginning of developing a health program that's going to make me so healthy. I'll have the vitality to do whatever I want to do for the next 30 years of my life. Munch, munch, happy, happy, self-esteem off the scale. Now, if you eat an apple the second day, you become almost delirious. <laughs> saying, wow, 
I'm on my way. Somebody said, just two apples? Says, look, you don't understand. Not only did I do it yesterday, I've done it again today. This is really proving to myself with no audience, no microphones, no nothing, just you and yourself. You've convinced yourself, I'm on my way to the healthiest I ever have been. I'm starting a new life. This is the second day. I'm on my way. That's how easy it is to change your life. You don't need some dramatic vision. Just begin something. And maybe by health or by whatever other things we can think of to do, you just get back on a better track. One of the major things Shove taught me when I met him, he said, poor thinking habits keeps most people poor. Not poor working habits. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. And Shove taught me that the mind is like a factory, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. And that's what builds the economic, social, financial fabric of your life. He quoted me a Bible phrase that says, as you think, so you become. How awesome. When he talked about poor thinking habits, he had me. I used to start the day reading the morning newspaper. I mean, you can believe that or not. I'd get a cup of coffee and read the paper. I'd load up on wars and riots and murders and stabbings and killings and bank robberies and muggings and car wrecks and tragedies. I'd even read the back pages. I seem to like that stuff for some weird reason. I'd load up on all that and then I'd start the day. You can imagine the kind of days I used to have. The guy says, I want to be a great leader. Wonderful. The first thing we do is follow him to his house. When we get there, we walk in and check his library, number one. Somebody says, well, why check his library? The reason is because what a man reads pours massive ingredients into his mental factory and the fabric of his life is built from those ingredients. You would not believe what some people have got in their house to read. You would not believe. One of the best dressed up words I know for a lot of it is trash. <laughs> Can you imagine dumping a barrel of trash into this mental factory every day and coming out with a rich, dynamic, positive life? It can't be done. You might as well try making a cake with cement. The kids back in Danbury, Connecticut, high school, they're asking me questions one day. I'm talking to the kids. Kids got good questions these days. One of them said to me, Mr. Rohn, how do you build the good life? I said, it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Here's how you build anything. Select the right ingredients, keep out the wrong ingredients, and it starts with thought. Everything starts with thought. So you must be wise and careful what you think about because that starts everything. You gotta be wise and careful. I asked the kids, what would happen if somebody dropped sugar in my coffee? They said, will you be okay? I said, what if somebody dropped strychnine in my coffee? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct. Lesson one, life is both sugar and strychnine. You gotta be careful. I said, what if my worst enemy drops in the sugar? They said, will you be okay? I said, what if my best friend, even by accident, drops in the strychnine? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct. Lesson two, watch your coffee. <laughs> You gotta be careful. See, it doesn't matter who hands you the bad stuff. It doesn't matter where you get the bad stuff. It'll still do its damage on your bank account. Wherever you get it. Mr. Shoff gave me one of the greatest phrases when I first met him when he said, Jim, every day stand guard at the door of your mind. How important. Stand guard 
at the door of your mind. And you decide what goes into your mental factory. Don't let anybody just dump anything they want to in your mental factory because you've got to live with the results.